Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. You know the rest. This is going to be part, well, this is going to be Ezekiel chapter 11 and continuation of the Ezekiel series. Now, the whole purpose of these prophets books, prophetic books, like Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, is to show you the character of the Lord. And in the books of Moses, I believe Numbers or Deuteronomy, the Lord said, blessings if you follow me and curses if you don't. Well, now we're into the curse mode in Ezekiel. And things are absolutely no different today. It's just instead of horses back then, uh, we got cars today. Technology changes, but the heart of man does not. There are actually people out there that will try to convince you that the uh, God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament are totally different. Uh, I don't think so. The Bible says... I am the Lord, I change not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. How long's forever? Forever. But there are people who say, oh yeah, that Old Testament God, he was cruel, mean, you know, he's that terrible guy. But now we got Jesus, he's the New Testament guy, and he loves everybody, and you know, he's thumbs up. Uh... Tell you what, people that believe that should read the book of Revelation where it talks about uh, war and disease and famine. Things haven't changed. The God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament, same God. It's just uh, a lot of people make, uh, well, I guess they could say, and the church made God in man's image instead of God made man in his image. Yeah, something like that. And that's in uh, Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Oh, yeah. And then you got Malachi 3, 6. For I am the Lord. I change not. I don't change. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Now, English, during the days of the King James, was uh, what I believe they had, mid they called Middle English. You had Old English, Middle English, and then uh, you got Modern English. And Old English and Middle English were very close to German. You know, in English, we would today we would say, I am going to the car, or I am going to the store. In German, uh, I believe you would say, to the store I am going, or to the store I go, or to the car I go. Does it mean something different? No. It's just the word order is different. Uh, sort of like uh, Yoda in Star Wars, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of Yiddish uh, symbolism in uh, Star Wars. Like Jedi and Yoda and all that uh, Yiddish words. Look them up. Seriously. All right, so let's get on with Ezekiel chapter 11. Verse 1. Moreover, the Spirit lifted me up and brought me unto the east gate of the Lord's house, which looketh eastward. And behold, at the door of the gate, five and twenty men, among whom I saw... Jazaniah, the son of Azur, and Pelatiah, 
the son of Beniah, princes of the people. Now, if I remember correctly, those names are in um, Jeremiah. From what I understand, it's very, very possible. And I'm sure that uh, Ezekiel and Jeremiah were contemporaries. I'm not sure about Isaiah. I'd have to look it up. But they, they all lived around the same time period. Let me look that up. All right, Jeremiah, Daniel, and Ezekiel were contemporaries. Isaiah, supposedly, if the timeline is correct, was uh, quite a bit earlier. They didn't know uh, Isaiah. That's if you can trust the timelines. Uh, I'm very, very skeptical about anything coming from the church. All right, so, verse 2. So, Jezaniah and Pelatiah, princes of the people. And then verse 2. Then said he unto me, Son of man, these are the men that devise mischief and give wicked counsel in this city. So here it is, these princes, they're mischievous and they give wicked advice. which say, it is not near, you know, trouble. Oh, you know, we're not going to see trouble. It's not near. Let us build houses. This city is the cauldron and we be the flesh. I don't understand that uh, saying very well. But, uh, you know, Trouble's not near us. Hey, let's keep building our houses, you know, planting our gardens. Just keep doing what we're doing, you know. Nothing's going to change. Let's get back, you know, keep doing things like normal. You know, don't have repentance. Don't get on your hands and knees and cry out to God for forgiveness. You don't need to do that. All you got to do is, hey, we're... God's chosen people, and he loves us anyway, no matter what we do. That's basically their wicked counsel. But the prophet says in verse 4, Therefore prophesy against them. Prophesy, O son of man. And the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said unto me, Speak, thus saith the Lord. Thus have you said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. Oh boy, that's a scary thought. I know my thoughts are not as uh, holy and pure as they should be. Not even close. Verse 6. Ye have multiplied your slain in this city, and ye have filled the streets thereof with the slain. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, your slain, whom ye have laid in the midst of it, they are the flesh, and this city is the cauldron. But I will bring you forth out of the midst of it. Ye have feared the sword, and I will bring a sword upon you, saith the Lord God. Oh yeah, you feared war? Well, I'm going to bring war to your doorstep. That's the Bob translation. Verse 9. And I will bring you out of the midst thereof and deliver you into the hands of strangers and will execute judgments among you. Ye shall fall by the sword. I will judge you in the border of Israel and ye shall know that I am the Lord. This city shall not be your cauldron, neither shall ye be the flesh in the midst thereof. But I will judge you in the border of Israel. I think what uh, the cauldron and the flesh has reference to is, uh, you know, it's like a, the city's like the pot of stew and we're going to be fed by it and nourished by it. I 
I suspect that's what that saying means, but I'm not 100% sure. So, you know, the city's going to feed us. I don't know. I could be wrong. Somebody else got a better idea? Hey, let me know in the comments. Let us know in the comments. Because uh, I sure don't know everything. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, for ye have not walked in my statutes, neither executed my judgments. But ye have after the manner of the heathen that are round about you. Let me tell you something, people. God tells you what to do with witches. God tells you what to do with those that practice so dom and you put a Y on the end. S-O and then you take a D-O-M and then you put a Y on the end. He tells you what to do with those kind of people. Like King Josiah did. King Josiah uh, got, got rid of them. They bring curses upon a nation. You know, <laughs> when I was in the army, the quickest way to get a discharge was to uh, to be one of those. And it wouldn't be an honorable discharge either. They kicked you out. Yep. Yep. Matter of fact, uh, I uh, was on a date with a girl, and uh, she joined the army, and she was in basic training, and she just, she was like, man, this, this crap is not for me, uh, you know. So she went to the captain, and she says, Captain, I can't take it anymore, and she's like, what? She says, yeah, when I take a shower with all these gorgeous looking girls, I, I just, I, I just want to go crazy. You know, I want to have each and every one of them. So, you know, next day she's out of the army. They got rid of her. And we, you know, we were laughing about it because I was in the army, you know, uh, thought that was real funny. I mean, she wasn't, I don't, I don't think she was a lesbian but uh i don't know what can i tell you my 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 how things have changed and all these people have thought oh trump's different than uh, obama well trump kept all of obama's uh, little policies he didn't change anything not really and now you got biden even going further than obama did curses people curses you want to know why the United States is cursed? Because we don't follow God's statutes. And I'm not talking about the Ten Commandments. I'm talking about God's statutes. The Bible says that uh, murderers would be put to death before the sun went down. But you could only, you know, you had to have two or more witnesses. When you got two or more witnesses that witnessed something, a capital crime, they were to be executed before the sun went down. Period. You know, nowadays, uh, people are afraid to report crimes because, you know, uh, if you're supposed to schedule to go to court in a month and the people are released on bail and then they decide, well, I don't want to go to jail, so I'm going to get rid of the witnesses. And they kill the witnesses. Oh, then you go to court. Well, oh, where's the witness? Oh, they're dead. Oh, okay. Well, I guess there's no proof that this guy did it. So he's off. It's happened many times. Under God's law, doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. And all these Torah keepers, so-called, these liars, these hypocrites, they never talk about what I'm talking about. Uh-uh. No, they want you to do circumcision, and they want you to all keep the Sabbath and these holy days, and, you know, all these little rituals. No. God's justice system works. Oh, but Chaplain Bob, what happens if... Uh, 
if you get two or three people that lie about somebody be you know to do something to have them put to death well the bible says if you commit perjury whatever the penalty was that they were trying to get the other person in trouble for was to be put on them the liars so if they try to have somebody put to death uh perjurers would die period if you stole something you had to repay it four times if you didn't have the money uh you were sold into slavery until that could be paid yeah well chaplain bob what happens if the, they don't want to they they refuse to do the slavery thing and the work for the people that paid the debt oh that's real simple you stone them to death and no you don't give them colombian gold or uh turkish hash or afghanistan hash or whatever wherever that stuff comes from yeah they get stoned but it's not good weed and i'll tell you what the next person uh that gets uh steals and can't pay it back that gets sold into slavery uh they'll say oh okay you want me to paint your barn no problem what color <laughs> you know oh okay we'll take care of it i'm sold into slavery because i stole a bicycle you know god's laws work and originally this country pretty much followed god's laws but we don't we're not even close anymore we're not even close and i know i've mentioned it a bunch of times but harvard and yale were originally bible colleges yeah bible colleges now you got a you know who that starts with a j as head of harvard and they got classes uh on anal sex i don't even want to know what the curriculum is I and mean, can you imagine that a college elective on anal sex really really i think i'll pass yeah ezekiel eleven twelve, and ye shall know that i am the lord for ye have not for ye have not walked in my statutes, neither executed my judgments, but have done after the manners of the heathen that are round about you. Sounds like America today, doesn't it? Or Europe or UK, you know. And it came to pass when I prophesied that Pelatiah, the son of Benelah, died. Then I fell down upon my face and cried with a loud voice and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou make a full end of the remnant of Israel? And the answer is no, there's going to be a remnant. Well, that's the Bob. That's going to be the, yeah. You know, when uh, I, my opinion, don't quote me on this. My opinion is, what they call the seven-year period of tribulation really isn't seven years of tribulation. It's actually 42 months, about three and a half years. But the time leading up to that is about three and a half years, 42 months, what they call the time of sorrows. And I don't know if we're there yet, but I feel we're probably getting pretty close. Then again... Uh, there's been other times in history when people said, oh yeah, we're, you know, we're getting into that period. Um, you know, the Black Death, the bubonic plague in Europe, if any of that was what they say it is. Do you know about a quarter of Europe died from the bubonic plague, the Black Death? They would have carts going through the streets of the city yelling bring out your dead bring out your dead i think they did that in a monty python movie didn't they yeah but they meant it that would you know it's just it's amazing the bible tells you what to do uh in a lot of situations 
quarantining of sick people, not healthy people. Sick people. But we don't follow that anymore. We don't follow anything. So, Lord, are you going to save a, are you going to, you know, what is it, verse 13? Ah, Lord God, wilt thou make a full end of the remnant of Israel? Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, the men of thy kindred, and all the house of Israel, holy, are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get you far from the Lord, unto us is this land, given in possession. You know, get away from the Lord. Because this land is ours. Verse 16. Therefore say, Thus saith the Lord God, Although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof and all the abominations thereof from thence. All right, verse 19. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh. So there, are, God's going to give his people a, a heart transplant from a stony heart to a heart of flesh. Where do we read about that? Book of Hebrews. You notice uh, the Hebrew roots and Torah keepers, they don't even know the book of Hebrews exists. Because if they did, they wouldn't be talking all that garbage. Hebrews 10, 16, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. How about Hebrews 10? I'm sorry, Hebrews 8, chapter 10. Uh, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10. Hebrews 8, 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Uh, you know, in the book of Hebrew is quoting Jeremiah 31, 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. See, Torah keepers are a bunch of liars and hypocrites. Oh, yeah. And we know who's behind them. Yeah. Yeah. See, the Hebrew Roots people, they don't want uh, the law written in their hearts. They want the laws written on the tablets of stone. That's what they want because they're the, uh, they've been listening to uh, rabbis and not the spirit. Ezekiel 11, 19, And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them an heart of flesh, 
that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. But as for them, whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, oh yeah, you want to you want to do what you want to do? Oh yeah. Well, he says, I will recompense their way upon their own heads, saith the Lord. Then did the cherubims lift up their wings and the wheels beside them, and the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. And the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city and stood upon the mountain, which is on the east side of the city. Afterwards, the Spirit took me up and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God into Chaldea to them of the captivity. So the vision that I had seen went up from me. Now, Chaldea and the Chaldeans, that's a part of the Babylonian Empire. I'm not exactly 100% sure, but I think it's like, uh, you know, Texas is part of the United States. You know, all Texans, all native Texans are U.S. citizens, but not all U.S. citizens are Texans. Well, Ch Chaldea was a uh, major part of the Babylonian Empire. Verse 25. Then I spake unto them of the captivity, all the things that the Lord had showed me. And that is the end of chapter 11. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to uh, God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.